Welcome to part one of this two-part circuit logics tutorial on analog circuit simulation. In this portion of the tutorial we'll be performing a transient analysis as well as a DC operating point analysis. We begin with a voltage divider biased common emitter BJT amplifier circuit. The first thing we need to take care of is to change the simulation engine into analog mode. This is accomplished by clicking on the mode select button from the toolbar. Notice that the mode select icon is changed from a digital gate to an analog transistor. We'll now move on and examine a couple of the settings required for a basic analog simulation. These settings are set by default. However, it's important just to take a quick look and get an understanding of the options available. First, we bring up the options menu and ensure that auto designation is checked. This option ensures that each element in our circuit has a unique identifier. Unless you're familiar with SPICE simulation, it's best to keep the auto designation option checked rather than populate each component's field with a unique identifier. Next, we'll define what type of data we want to collect during the simulation by selecting the Analog Options item to bring up the SPICE Variables dialog box. This dialog box allows the user access to the advanced simulation settings. In addition, there's a section allowing the user to define what type of data to collect during the simulation. The default setting collects node voltages and supply currents. Now we'll take a look at some of the analysis options available. We return to the options menu and select the analog analysis option from the menu items listing. This brings up the analysis dialog box. The dialog box consists of four main sections. One for DC analysis, one for AC analysis, one for a transient analysis, and lastly a section for DC operating point analysis. At the bottom of the dialog box, there's an option to always set defaults for transient and operating point analysis. When selected, the transient analysis and operating point analysis are both enabled and they use the standard default settings. We'll deselect this option to get a closer look at the defaults for these two analysis. The default setting for the operating point analysis is DC average voltage. The data collected due to this setting will be used for probes as well as any meters we connect to the circuit. The transient analysis portion of the dialog box allows the user to define the start and stop time for the simulation. In addition, the user can select the time step and maximum time step values. By default, the start time is always set to zero. The stop time, however, varies depending on the signal source in your circuit. Simulation duration will be long enough such that five complete cycles of an AC source can be plotted and data can be recorded. We have a one kilohertz source connected to our amplifier circuit, therefore the stop time is set to five milliseconds. These values are populated automatically, but can be modified by the user at will. We'll now move on and simulate the circuit. Keep in mind the only setting that we've actually modified was the simulation mode setting which we changed from digital to analog. This means that there are no complex setups required to run a simple five cycle transient analysis or an operating point analysis using circuit logics. To simulate the circuit we simply toggle the simulation switch located on the main toolbar. With the simulation running, two results windows appear. One is used to show the results of DC operating point analysis data. The other is used for transient analysis data. At this point, neither window is showing any results. This is due to the fact that we've not selected any points of interest in the circuit. The first step for displaying transient analysis data is to define the grid and scale. To do this, we click on the icon in the upper left-hand corner of the Transient Analysis Grapher window. When the dialog box containing the grapher settings opens, 
we select the show division values for both the X and Y axis. We also select the show the wave grid option. Clicking the OK button returns us to the transient analysis window. Our grid and scaling now appears. The time duration specified on the horizontal axis is defined by our start time and stop time in the transient analysis setup. The vertical scaling will be dependent upon the size of the waveforms that we're plotting. This is accomplished by using the auto setting in the upper left hand corner of the grapher window. To display the data for the current simulation, we click on the top bar of the window for the transient analysis. This sets the focus to that analysis. We then click on a desired location in the circuit. In this instance, we'll plot the input to the amplifier. The voltage waveform associated with the amplifier input is now displayed in the grapher window. Notice that the range of the vertical axis is now set to plus or minus 120 millivolts. This range will be expanded by the auto graphing function when we plot the output as the gain of this amplifier is approximately 10. Moving on, we now plot the output voltage waveform in the same manner. We do this by clicking on the wire at the output. The input and output voltage waveforms are now both displayed in the transient analysis grapher window. Notice that the vertical scaling now ranges from 1.2 to negative 1.2 volts. This was automatically adjusted as the amplitude of the output is approximately 10 times that of the input. To display a DC average voltage obtained by our operating point analysis, we click on the DC analysis window to give it focus. Next, we select a point on the circuit wiring for which we want the DC average voltage value. The DC average voltage at the base of the transistor is now displayed in the DC analysis window. We terminate the simulation by once again toggling the simulation switch on the main toolbar. This concludes our demonstration on the simulation of analog circuits, specifically the transient and operating point analysis using CircuitLogic simulation software. For more information on CircuitLogic or any of the other simulation software packages offered by Logic Design, contact us at the telephone, email, or website address shown here.